Hello and welcome back to Cult Movie Club and today we're going to be talking about a film from 1991 um, Freddy's Dead and The Final Nightmare um, Before we start going into that though uh, I want to go through like uh, some of the other my relationship with the, with the films leading up to this one that we're going to be talking about So I saw the first film um, probably about 87 or 88 something like that uh, Way too young I think it was Probably about, I don't know, seven, seven, eight, something like that. Um, way too young, really, but I, I ended up watching it. And then uh, I ended up watching part three. Um, pretty much straight away afterwards. Uh, loved that one. Absolutely loved it. Um, and then and then um, saw two then after that, uh, which I was definitely the weakest of those. Um, I still actually liked two, though. I know a lot of people didn't, uh, but yeah. I still I can't, I thought it was quite cool. Uh, and then uh, a few years passed, and, I, and then uh, yeah, eventually, because I, I couldn't obviously go to the cinema to watch it when it came out, I was too young. Um, I saw number four a couple of years later, probably like early 90s, um, directly followed by number five, so I'm quite close together. Uh, I didn't like number four really at all. I thought that some of the dream sequences were really good, but they, I just. It definitely, it was like it was like MTV had made it. It had that kind of vibe to it, and you know, it wasn't scary, but you know, I wasn't into it. I preferred number five. Um, I liked it. it had a really dark, uh, gothic atmosphere. Uh, the idea of him having a kid and stuff I was a bit weird, but you know, the the atmosphere of the film um, was a lot better, an improvement, I thought. Um, so, which leads to this. So, uh, again, yeah, couldn't see it at the cinema. I was too young. So, uh, but I did, um, I, I did get a comic book version of it. They did, I think they did it in three parts. And I had one of the latter parts, which was like the back end of the film. Um, I managed to get hold of a copy of, of that comic book and I read that. So, yeah, eventually when it came out on VHS, I uh, managed to see it on VHS. And, uh, yeah, it still had it in the UK. It still had the um, 3D effect, because they did this in 3D, because they kind of run out of ideas, and that was the best idea they could come up with, uh, was killing in 3D. So, um, it, but they had, they had that effect at the cinema, um, but it did not put it on like, the VHS versions, apart from in the UK, for some reason. Uh, so you got the 3D cardboard glasses in there, which was quite cool. Um, so yeah, finally saw that on that. And um, yeah, definitely not the best. Um, not in my, not the worst in my opinion, but um, it was it, it was a bit of a letdown, especially the especially the death. Um, I thought the scenes leading up to that were quite cool, and some of the three D worked, um, but I don't know near like today's standards. It, obviously, it was the red and green thing, um, but the way they killed him, I thought was pretty lame. Um, and it was just a bit bizarre, um, you know. The the it was it was pretty much a comedy at this point, um, you know. They they kind of it, they just got bound to the fact that yeah, this is not scary anymore. Story story basically has gone right away from the sequels completely. Um, I think that's because they couldn't get the the actress from the previous sequels, so they just rewrote the whole thing. Uh, apparently Peter Jackson actually did uh, a script of this uh, by sounds of it they should have made that because it probably would have been a better film uh, but uh, yeah there we go uh, this is directed by Rachel Talele I think she's called um, she went on to do Tank Girl um, and make me listen TV now um, she was part of the um, she was part of the production team I think during the whole franchise um, yeah, there's, and there's a bizarre amount of cameos in this film. I remember him really hyping up the fact that there was a cameo from Rose and Barr, which just is like, you know, a time capsule of when this film came out, as that was probably the most popular programme then. Um, it's really cool that Johnny Depp came back for this and did a cameo. Um, you know, so that's quite fun. Um, I'm not going to go into the story because... You know, it's it's the same thing again, really, with a couple of little different bits. Like, you know the score. Um, the deaths are quite good. Um, there isn't there's as many as there should be. Um, and I think that is a pet hate of a lot of fans. I get it. Uh, I thought the 
Carlos's death in this was actually quite good. Uh, apparently that's Robert England's favourite of the franchise also. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good, it's pretty creative, it's pretty funny, it's pretty, you know, it's, when you think about it as well, it's a bit wrong. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, a good moment in the film. I thought the bit where he um, killed Spencer in the video game, I thought that's when they took it too far. It went, that's that was way over the line. Um, yeah, he's just, it went into another dimension then. It was, just, wasn't you know, it's just weird. And then you've got the John Doe death, which is straight out of like a Looney Tunes cartoon. It's like you know that that I think there's a scene in it which is ripped straight out of Roadrunner. It's yeah, it's again they're playing it for laughs. Um, so and then you you know it goes into like. Um, you know, the final part, and it's all leading up to his death. I thought one good thing that they did with this film is they went more into the backstory, which none of the other films really did. Um, and the scenes where, you know, it's going back through, you know, the timeline as to how he how he became, how he was, um, you know, with Alice Cooper as his dad and stuff like that, I thought that was really good. Uh, that was a really good part of the film. Um, but all in all... It's not the best. Obviously, Twin Peaks was really popular around this time also, so I think they were going for the, uh, that kind of vibe, um, especially in the scenes in Springwood where there's no kids and they're at the fun fair and stuff, and if you know there's like these adults just wandering around. That's got a bit of a Twin Peaks vibe to it, and I think that's kind of where they were going, and they're trying to channel David Lynch, but he, you know the only David Lynch can 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 do David Lynch stuff um, so I think I think that's where they were kind of trying to go with it but it didn't kind of work um, and they were also trying to use like a John Watts kind of comedy vibe to it and stuff um, but it's just a bit of a mishmash um, it doesn't quite work but it's I like it it's quite interesting um, like I said I prefer it over the fourth um, but yeah I think I think this and the second one exists slightly out of the franchise um, you know, they're just a bit different than the others and the stories aren't connected. Like, you know, there's a story thread going through the others, whereas they're the kind of their own story. So they kind of exist slightly out of it. So if you're new to the franchise, uh, obviously it's, you're going to come across it at some point because it's a six. Um, it's not the last, obviously. He didn't die. Well, he did, but they brought him back. Um, you're going to, you know, you, you're going to watch it at some point. Um and just go just go into it you know with an open mind basically and don't expect anything like the first few um, thanks again for watching i'll see you soon